At this point, I've been driving down the freeway for about 40 minutes, and the car is uh, completely warmed up at a normal operating temperature. So we can see that's about 165 degrees on the sensor. At this point, the thermostat is actually closed, and it's been like that for quite a while. The needle hasn't actually moved since I got on the freeway, but that has nothing to do with the buffer, as we'll see in a minute. Okay, here I've pulled over and stopped to simulate being stopped in traffic, and we'll start to see the needle start to climb like uh, you would see in a normal gauge. Uh, this is the information that's hidden by the buffer. It's going to climb from about 170 to about 235 degrees Fahrenheit as we sit here. Now note that the thermostat is still closed and what you're seeing is really a cross between the coolant temperature and the cylinder head temperature since there's no actual water moving where the sensor is located. The water won't actually get moving until the thermostat housing temperature reaches the opening temperature of the thermostat. And that happens at about 235, 240 degrees at the cylinder head and is also a little bit time dependent. As you sit here watching this happen you might gain just a little bit of sympathy for the BMW engineers putting the buffer circuit on this gauge in the first place as the amount of movement and the range of the movement that happens under normal driving conditions in this car would probably be pretty alarming to the average driver. That's because with the sensor in the head the temperatures that are displayed on this gauge are higher than the normal temperatures you would see on a, another car with the sensor located in the thermostat. Okay, what I've done here is I've just turned the motor off for about a minute, and uh, what happens pretty quickly is that the sensor uh, assumes the cylinder head temperature because there's no water moving around it. I've restarted the engine and I'm pulling back out into the street here. If you can see past my flailing arms as I make the various turns here, you'll see that over a span of just a few seconds and possibly a couple of hundred yards, the uh, gauge is going to swing about 60 degrees back to its normal operating temperature. I really do agree with BMW that most drivers would probably find this behavior erratic and it might cause warranty issues, but they could have at least put a switch on it or something for us. As you can see, it's really dropping rapidly, and I'm not even out of the parking lot yet. I'm probably going to have to put the phone down before I get into the actual street. But uh, there it is. That's what an unbuffered temperature gauge on an E36 looks like.